Doctor, my eyes have seen the year. My name is Milton Wolf, and I am the doctor who is Barack Obama's cousin. Barack and I are actually second cousins, both on the maternal side. Uh, his grandmother and my mother are first cousins. With the age difference, my mother and his mother actually grew up as young girls together in Wichita. Part of my training and part of my practice have been both in the government-run uh, sectors of, of medicine and in the private sectors of medicine. And about two weeks ago, I had to make a very difficult decision. As I read through what was in this bill and imagined the impact it would have on my patients, I realized I had to take a stand for my patients and for my profession and ultimately for my country. And so I made it known that I had to take a stand against what has become known as Obamacare. And the reason for that is right within the language of the bill itself is the very rationing that this Congress and this President has said is not there. Section 3403 creates the Medicare Advisory Board. Some people call this the Medicare Rationing Commission. They have one job to do and one job only. Their job is to recommend cuts to Medicare. That means they are going to give less care to Medicare patients. And the recommendations that these unelected and unaccountable officials will make can go into law even without the Congress taking an action. So even without the people being represented. Now they've already tipped their hand that they will ration care because they also they wrote it right into the bill. Section 3007 refers to a scheme in which your primary care doctor, your family doctor, will be financially penalized for providing to you or your family the medical care they have deemed you need. If they are in the top 10% of, Medicare, of, of uh, physician, physicians who refer patients on to specialists, then this plan gives them a 5% cut, a financial penalty, a 5% aggregated cut on all the Medicare reimbursements they have for the year not just the ones they send to the specialists, all of them across the board. Give that a little consideration. It doesn't care if your daughter hurt her arm and needs to go to the orthopedic surgeon. It doesn't care if your mother's short of breath and needs a pulmonologist. All it cares is that your doctor has enough sick patients that puts them in the top 10% of doctors and they will be financially penalized. I find that, frankly, to be reprehensible. In every situation, you force a, you force a doctor to face a financial penalty for providing the medical care that their professional opinion has determined you need. Now what happened in Washington on Sunday has changed everything because this is the law of the land, but Kansas still has the opportunity to choose its own health care destiny because the Tenth Amendment actually means what the Tenth Amendment says. And so now it falls on us as Kansans, and the only ones who can protect Kansans are Kansans. The, the Kansas Health Care Freedom Amendment is a very simple amendment that says Kansans will be in control of their own health care decisions. I support it completely. I stand behind everyone who supports this bill, this amendment, and I urge everyone to support it as well. It is the best way to protect Kansans from the takeover of our healthcare system. I would also suggest to you that anyone who stands in the way of this amendment is just as responsible for foisting the government-controlled health care on Kansas, on Kansans, as Barack Obama himself. They, are, they will be just as responsible as Nancy Pelosi herself. My life has been changed in a way that I wouldn't wish on anybody but at the same time, I'll tell you, it's, an exhilarating, it's, it, it's exhilarating to take a stand for what you believe in. That's what I've done. And by doing so, I have been thrown into a media whirlwind where I have, uh, I have everybody asking for, for uh, interviews from me, from the, from the Fort Hayes Gazette to the BBC, uh, thrown into the morning news programs, the evening political shows. Uh, it's, it's a different experience. And part of that happened because when I went to Washington, D.C., I wanted to talk to my congressman, Dennis Moore. And I just wanted to ask him some very simple questions about health care and how it will affect my patients and how he can support this when it will affect my patients in this way. But Dennis Moore wouldn't meet with me. The cameras came and Dennis Moore ducked. 
And after the cameras went away, he called me on the phone. He's a nice man, he's an affable man, and he may have served the district ably for 12 years, but in the end, he wouldn't stand in front of the cameras and talk uh, to, the, to his voters of why he would support this. So I came here today knowing what happened in Washington, D.C., knowing that we still have a hope in Kansas to control our own health care destiny to speak with my Senator John Vrattle. Now, John Vrattle wouldn't meet with me. Now, I'd be happy to put him on camera with me. I'd be happy to make him famous. There are a lot of people from, from each uh, side of this, from, from, from coast to coast in this country and elsewhere, who would love to hear how it is that we're going to foist Obamacare on Kansans. And in my opinion, anyone who's voted against this, John Vrattle included, is just as responsible as Barack Obama himself for delivering Obamacare to Kansans. I go from here to discuss this with a number of other uh, media outlets, uh, both locally and nationally. Uh, I would urge Senator Vrattle to give me a call. More so, I would urge for him to change his mind and support this amendment. Now, I understand he said that this is a symbolic measure. Now, let me say, at the very worst, even if he's right, even if this is just symbolism, isn't it good symbolism to stand with the voters of Kansas? Isn't it good symbolism to stand with the patients of Kansas? Because right now, he's standing with Nancy Pelosi, and he's standing with Barack Obama, and he's going to be just as responsible for sending Obamacare into Kansas. Sunday, everything changed. Decisions that they had made before Sunday are out the window because on Sunday we had the biggest assault on, on Kansans' liberty that we've had in our history. They have it, the power in their hands. They have it in their control to stop this. Now we need to make sure that their voters are aware of that. I'll tell you myself, I, I told you I'm not a political act activist. I have never done anything like this, but I'm a political watcher. I'm a news watcher. I didn't know that this amendment even existed until about 12 hours ago. And when I heard about it, I got on the phone, I, I, I saw on the website what it was, and I got on the phone and called who was the first name of the sponsor on there, and it happens to be Cinder Cook. And, I, and yes, absolutely, I can, I can assure you that of course they are representatives uh, of, their, of their districts, but those of us who are out there talking to patients, talking to doctors, talking to anyone, it's hard to find support for this. It is enormously hard to find support for this. This is, this is uh, a chance for these people to either stand with Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama and foist Obamacare on Kansans, or it's their opportunity to prevent it, to stand up for, for Kansans and give them the control of their own health care destiny. I suspect they don't want to ha have to defend that on camera, I would urge them to reconsider and change their mind and stand with the patients. Um, is, it, is it an interesting story that, um, that uh, the president happens, uh, as he is, is in his signature issue and his central issue, is trying to change our health care system, and it happens to be that he has a cousin who's a doctor who's opposed to it. Is that interesting? I suppose so, and I suppose that's gotten, uh, gotten the attention. Um, but the truth is it's not about him. And it's not about me, it's about my patients. And that's why I'm here. And I'm happy to discuss this with anyone because I understand the issues well enough that it's, this is not about seeking attention, this is about serving my patients. Anyone who's read that bill knows that what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, and I think one of the reasons that many of, my, many of our representatives won't meet with me or won't meet with their constituents is because they haven't read the bill. You know, uh, sadly, President Obama said just last week that by the time the vote is held, he will know what's in the bill. <laughs> you know, that's not reassuring. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said, we have to vote on the bill so we can find out what's in the bill. Well, now we better brace for what's in the bill. And the best way to do that is for Kansans to stand up for Kansans. And it's in, their, it's in the power of our legislators. And I'd say we give them all the encouragement we can to stand up for Kansas patients.